Hello, today's topic will be about the fundamental frequency in discrete signals. In this video, we will cover frequency, fundamental frequency, continuous functions or signals as seen here, and discrete signals, as well as how to find the fundamental frequency of discrete signals. Let's start by talking a bit more about frequency and fundamental frequency. When we talk about frequency, all we really mean at a basic level is how often does it repeat per second? So we are talking about the signals or functions that have a repetitive pattern. One of the easy examples of this is a nice cosine wave. As you can see, the cosine wave repeats itself and we can pick out any part of this wave and to show where it actually repeats itself. I have picked out two spots here and now all I have to do is count the seconds or how far apart these two points are to find what is the period or how long did it take for it to repeat its cycle. Once we have found the period, we can easily find the frequency through the following equation. Fre frequency is equal to 1 over 1 divided by the period. And that's exactly how we find frequency. So what about the fundamental frequency? For the cosine wave, it's the same as its frequency. For more complicated signals, which have more than one frequency, the fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency that it has. This is also sometimes called the first harmonic. For example, the signal shown to the left is the combination of the sine waves shown in the right. Here, the fundamental frequency would be the slow blue sine curve on the right. Knowing this fundamental frequency lets us know the signal's most dominant frequency. It can tell us what other frequencies would go well or be a harmonic with our signal. And this can lead to, to the idea of resonance. And these are all important concepts and properties of, the sig of a signal. So it's a good idea to be able to find the fundamental frequency. So that's deal with fundamental frequency and frequency. But that was all for the time domain signal. The story changes a bit once we get to a discrete signal. A discrete signal or function does not contain the same domain as a continuous time signal. It only has values at set intervals with no value in between. There's no such thing as 1.5 in this discrete signal. Or we could think of it this way. A continuous function is like a recorded video. You can change the time at any point in the video, say at 5 minutes and 12.5 seconds, and still get an image and we could still know what we're talking about. However, in a discrete function, you can think of it as a set of pictures, perhaps taken at every second. You can't go to the one and a half picture taken. There's just no such thing. This is a loss of information can pose a problem to our nice cosine wave because now while it may look and it may, and we may know intuitively that it is repeating, we have just lost enough information to say that it's not. So the question is, does it or does it not have a fundamental frequency? Well, in this case, and just like in cases where we don't have a nice repeating function or signal, it does not. Let's try some practice problems. The first question is, is the function periodic? And if so, what is the fundamental frequency for the expression cosine of 0 0.01 pi n? Now, notice that we have an n here. This is just like the variable x or t, 
except it is used for when we are talking about discrete functions. Also, we are talking about a cosine function. We know that cosine functions should repeat every 2 pi. So we just need to know one more thing to answer this question. Namely, we are just trying to see if the expression on the inside is nice enough for it to be periodic. So we are looking at this. But let's stop here for a moment to talk about the simple sinusoidal function. In general, it would look like this, a sine of omega naught n minus phi, where a is, again, w naught isn't the angular frequency, and phi is the phase shift. For our problem, we don't care about a or phase shift. Everything we care about is sitting next to r and that omega naught. Knowing that, we can continue. So it all boils down to either of these two equations, 2 pi f naught times n is equal to 2 k pi, or omega naught times n is equal to 2 k pi. Depending how the equation was given, either the left equation or the right equation would be easier to solve this problem. For our problem, we will be using omega naught n is equal to 2 k pi. The big n is our period. Omega naught is our frequency, and 2 k pi is because we are dealing with some cosine function. We will solve for n since that will give us our solution. Solving for n in this in the second equation gives us n equals 2 k pi over omega naught. We can substitute omega naught for everything that is sitting beside little n inside the cosine function. And so we will get n equals 2k pi over 0 0.01 pi. We want to simplify this and put it in the simplest form. And this is key. Putting it in the most simplest form is actually finding the most fundamental frequency. So we will first start by eliminating pi. And we get n equals 2k divided by 0 0.01. Simplifying that even further, we get n equals 200k over 1. At the very end, we get that 200k over 1. This is as simple as we can get. We want this final expression to be a rational number. That is, at most, an integer divided by an integer. So that the appropriate k will give us the appropriate whole number for n, which again, as you may recall, is our period n. If it becomes a whole number, you will get the cosine function to be actually be repetitive. So for this problem, yes, this function is periodic with period of 200 and a fundamental frequency of 1 over 200. We just flip that 200 around. And that's it. Moving on to the next question. Next problem has cosine of pi times 30n over 105. Again, this question is rather similar to the previous question, so you can pause here to give it a go. Okay, here is the solution. We will start again with the same equation we have used before, n equals 2k pi divided by omega naught, and we will plug in what we know for omega naught to get 2k pi divided by pi times 30 over 105. Now all we have to do is simplify this. We will first start out by canceling out those pi's. So we get n equals 2k divided by 30 over 105. Next, we will get 105 and multiply it with 2 to continue to simplify this. And we end up with n equals 210k divided by 30. One last round of simplification and we will get our answer. We end up with n equals 7k. Since 7 is already a nice whole number, we have a rather straightforward answer. Yes, this is periodic with period of 7 
and the fundamental frequency is 1 over 7. On to the third problem, and you can start to see where this is going. We will use the same equation for this, and we get n equals 2k pi over omega naught. We will plug in what we know for omega naught, and we have n equals 2k pi divided by 3 pi. Taking out the canceling out the pi's, we get 2k divided by 3, and this is what we end up with. We can't simulate it further, so our answer turns out to be n equals 2, and our fundamental frequency is 1 over 2. Let's try our fourth problem. It's sine of 3n. Now here we have a sine wave. However, a sine and cosine wave are pretty much the same thing, but with a phase shift of 90 degrees or pi over 2. But we don't care about phase shifts for these problems, so we can treat this as the same as a cosine function. So we're back to the same equation n equals 2k pi over omega naught. And yes, 3 is our omega naught, and we still have 2 pi since sine is periodic in 2 pi. So we plug that all in and we get n equals 2k pi over 3. Now we will try and simplify this. So here we get, well, we will notice that we can't simplify any further. And we will also notice that the end result is irrational, which for the discrete domain is rather unfortunate. This will not be periodic. And that is our answer for number four. Now, this seems to be a bit confusing since we learned that sine functions and cosine functions are periodic. They repeat and they have a pattern. So we can make a table of values for this function. And we will clearly see, despite going through a few cycles of this sine wave, we haven't repeated any y values. And we won't in this domain, since we require fractional and irrational numbers to start showing the repeating pattern of this sine wave. And that's why this discrete domain is different from a continuous time domain. Okay, the last problem is sine of pi times 62n over 10. Just like before, we will use n equals 2k pi divided by omega naught. And we will plug in pi times 62 over 10 for omega naught. And we can see that our equation now becomes n equals 2k pi divided by pi times 62 over 10. We can cancel out the pi's. And have you noticed this yet? Normally, if we don't have any other irrational numbers, canceling out the pi really helps out in showing that this function is periodic. So we can already start seeing the pattern here for solving these types of equations. So we get 2k over 62 over 10, which is just like the second problem we tried out. And we can simplify this by multiplying 10 to the top. So we get n equals 10k over 31. And so our n is 10. And our fundamental frequency turns out to be 31. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and always keep learning.